Okay, so we just learned how to count things. Uh, the next step is to do some probability with those things we just learned how to count. And I think there's a high probability you're going to know what's going on. Haha, -ha, what a joke that was. Um, but seriously, probability is like extremely intuitive. And so this section will be very easy. And then in future sections, it becomes unintuitive and then it gets hard. But for this section, it's easy. I'll try to go quickly through. Okay, so there are these things. They're called probability events. I'm going to be calling it A in later definitions, like the probability event A. And this is like the stuff you care about happening. Stuff you care about happening. Um, so for example, maybe a probability event would be, what's the probability of drawing an ace out of the deck of cards? Or what's the probability of rolling a six? That drawing the ace is our A, our probability event. That drawing the six, or rolling the six, is our A, the probability event. So our definition for probability is the stuff in A, in other words, the stuff we actually care about happening over the total stuff. And I'm using very like intuitive definitions because I think this just kind of makes sense. Like for example, if I want to roll a six, there's only one way that can happen, but there are six total ways I can roll the die. So one out of six. All right, so we also have these uh, things called odds. Odds are typically used in casinos uh, for sporting events. Uh, that's usually where you see those. Um, the odds in favor, uh, typically odds are written either as a fraction or as more of like a ratio. So instead of it being the stuff in A over the total stuff, it's the stuff in A as compared with the stuff not in A. So the odds in favor, the stuff you actually want to happen is going to be on top. Here's the stuff you don't want to happen. It's not the total things, it's the stuff you don't want to have happen. If you add up these two, what will it equal? The total. And then, uh, oh, I'm recording at home and the call to prayer went off. Anyway, um, so the odds against, uh, it's just exactly the opposite of odds are in favor. So the stuff not in A is um, on top and the stuff in A is on the bottom. All right, enough definitions. Probably thinking about this in terms of probability event is a little bit confusing. I think even if you were a little confused with these definitions, once we get to the examples, uh, you'll see what's going on. So let's look at an example here. Roulette, so like I said, probability, um, odds, and things like that is typically used in casinos. And it's very fun, I think, to figure out the probabilities of different games. So in roulette, that's the one with the wheel that you always see in movies. They like put the ball in and they spin the wheel and the ball is going to land in one of these different like slots. And there's a green zero slot. And then you also have one to 36. Half of them are black, half of them are red. So for each of the following, we're going to find the probability odds for and odds against of winning each of these bets. So first of all, getting a zero. So this is considered my A here. This is my probability event. How many things are in A? Well, there's just one, getting a zero. There's only one way to get a zero. It's only one slot. But that's out of how many total? Now let's just be careful. We have a zero slot and then we have one through 36. So there's actually 37 uh, possible total slots and zero is just one of them. So one out of 37. Now let's do the odds for and the odds against. So the four, remember, is the stuff in A compared with, and I'll write it with the colon this time because that's actually how you usually see odds compared with 36. Now why did I put a 36 here and not a 37? Because remember, for the probability, which is what I'm doing here, this is the total. But for odds, we don't compare with the total, we just compare about the number of things that aren't in, probabil in probability event A. Notice that 1 plus 36 is 37, so they should add up to the total. The odds against are going to be 36 to 1. I just flip it around. This is the stuff that I don't want. Okay, next, getting an odd number. Well, um, let's see. 
between 1 and 36. You can count this out. I'm pretty sure there are 23 odd numbers. No, what am I thinking? I'm pretty sure there are 18 odd numbers. That sounds better. So basically 36 divided by 2 is 18. And that's out of the total of 37. So notice, here's where casinos make their money. Let me get my calculator real quick. Getting an odd number is kind of the easiest bet you can win. It's almost 50-50, but it's just slightly less. So you have a 0.49 probability of getting an odd number. And this is how casinos make their money. They always make the bets just a little worse off for you. That's the whole reason they've added this extra zero slot. If they had made the bet 50-50, then they wouldn't win money. But since they make it just a little less than 50-50, the house is going to win. Okay, so the odds for, let's continue that column down here, 18 to 19, because there are 18 ways you can win, there are 19 ways you can lose, the odds against 19 to 18, just flip it around. Okay, there are these other weird bets you can make in the game of roulette, I googled this one time. There's a street, one, two, or three, so obviously the probability here is three out of 37, that would be three to 34, and then odds against would be 34 to three. What about getting the first dozen? So here again, it's just some random bet. Here you have 12 possibilities out of 37. Odds in favor, 12. And then obviously there are 25 ways of losing. So that makes the odds against 25 to 12. Is this like absurdly easy? Let's just not even discuss this last one because you said I was making these videos too long. The other one is just four out of 37. So like probability is really easy, right? It's really intuitive. You just have to kind of remember how odds work. Uh, now, there's one more way that probability is calculated. This stuff is all called theoretical probability because it's based on thinking about the total outcomes and where the outcomes are, but I haven't actually played the game. There's this other thing called experimental probability, and that's where you do an experiment and you calculate the probably probability based off real world data. So when I used to do this lesson in class uh, last year, I asked students, hey, how many of you are Moroccan and how many of you are not Moroccan? And then we could take this like little class sample and try to apply it to George Washington Academy as a whole. So maybe when I pull you in my class, I find out that there are 20 people who said they're Moroccan and there are like three people who said they're not Moroccan or maybe they're like dual citizens or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, this is just a sample, but the whole point of statistics is that you can take a sample and depending on how good your sample is, apply it to the whole. So what is the experimental probability that a randomly chosen GWA student, not just in my class, but in all of GWA is Moroccan? And we would say, hmm, that probability looks like it's 20 out of 23. Again, I don't know for sure, but I'm basing it on this experimental data. So this is not theoretical, like literally counting all the GWA students. It's based on an experiment. Now, according to the GWA website, 60% of the students are Moroccan. Does this match? So let's actually calculate what percent this is. 20 divided by 23 is 87%. This is higher than the website claims. How does that make sense? Well, remember, this was just an experimental probability. This was based on a whole, this was based on a sample. This is not looking at the school as a whole. So you have to be careful because even though we can use samples to educate us about the whole, obviously we might get some inaccuracies. And if you go into AP statistics, you'll be talking about this sort of thing way more in depth and we'll start talking about it a little bit more in next chapter as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Probability, it's absurdly easy.